everyone and welcome to Network Playroom. This is the fourth video in the Christmas calendar series and we're going to talk about the BGB rib failure. This video is inspired by the Cisco BGB frequently asked questions document and it ties together nicely with the video I published yesterday because we looked at what gets in, what gets installed into the routing table or rib and why. So let's get started. First of all, let me say that the rib failure sounds more dramatic than it is. Uh, so rib failure sounds like the routing table is broken, packets are not being forwarded, and the router is failing. But what it actually is, it's really not that big of a deal. It's not unusual to see this message with PGP, and I'll explain what it means in a moment. But before I do that, let's set up the scenario here. I don't have a lab to demonstrate this on the command line, so I'll use output from Cisco documentation to describe the rib failure. Anyway, it's more important to understand the concept. So I have a very simple topology from the Cisco documentation on the screen here. So these two networks, 1.1.1.1, slash 32 and 3.3.3.3 slash 32 are advertised to R2 here. And now let's look at a situation where PGP routes are installed into the routing table and there is no rip failure yet. So I have several different hidden layers here and I'll open them up in sequence as I explain the topics. But first, let's look at the PGB table. So here is what the PGB table would look like. And you can actually see the PGB table by using the show IP PGP command. So those two loopback interfaces, well, I'm going to assume that they are loopbacks, uh, were learned via PGP and they are listed right here and they are valid as indicated by this little asterisk sign next to those routes. Beautiful. But I won't go into much detail and I don't want to spend too much time reading this output and in interpreting the various codes, because I'll probably do that in another video. But for now, it's enough to understand that the routes were learned via PGP and stored in the PGP table. Now, let's verify that the PGP routes are installed into the routing table by using the IP show IP route command. So you should be able to see them here with the show IP route command, which is used to look at the rib. And this is the PGB table, by the way. And again, the rib is a collection of the best routes. And at this moment, the PGB routes are the best routes to reach those loopback networks. So you can see here that they are indeed PGP routes based on this code. But now let's create the rib failure. And this can be done by adding two static routes to those prefixes. And they will be preferred over the PGP routes and installed into the routing table because of the lower administrative distance. The administrative distance of static routes is 1, and the administrative distance is 20 for ePGP and 200 for IPGP. And we can actually even see this on the routing table. So if you look here, you can see 220 listed inside the brackets. So this is the administrative distance value. Now, if you remember from yesterday's video, we looked at this table that lists the default administrative distance values for different routing protocols. So you can see static route is here right under the connected interface. And 
EPGP is listed on this line and its administrative distance is 20. And finally here, here you can find PGP. Wow, okay, that didn't work as I wanted, but yeah, the value is 200. So now because static routes have a lower administrative distance, they will be preferred over the PGP route and they are going to be installed into the routing stable instead. So let's look at that next. Um, I'm going to hide these layers, so I'm actually going to have to erase these nodes that I've put here because otherwise it's going to look funny. All right, let me just do this really quickly. And all right, let's hide these and then open up this one. So now if you will look at this output here, oh, come on here, finally. So these two static routes are configured on the router now. They are pointing to the null zero interface, which, which is used to just discard packets. That doesn't matter at this point. All, all we need to know that those routes would now be installed into the routing table instead. And they are, as you can see here now, the code has changed and those are static routes right now. Um, and actually here's something interesting to note as well, because they were pointed to the null zero interface. So the routing table is actually interpreting them as connected interfaces, as you can see, directly connected null zero. So this is why you don't see that administrative distance of one inside the brackets as you did with the PGP routes. Um, okay, that was a side note. So moving on. Um, yeah, so basically the PGP routes are now thrown out of the routing table and the static routes are installed instead. So this is the PGP rib failure. And actually as a consequence, PGP marks its route with an R in the PGP table, which shows that those are in rib failure state. So let me show you that on this output. So again, we're just looking at the show IPGP output, but now you can see this R here, which means rib failure. And this is because the routes received via PGP are not in the routing table. So that's it. I mean, that's all it means. Rib failure means the PGP route is not the best route and it's not installed into the rib. So it doesn't mean your router is crashing and your packets are not being forwarded. There's no crisis. It just means that PGP wasn't able to install its best route to the routing table it got sad, it marked it as a rib failure and put this little R here to indicate the status. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.